Yo, what's up? This is Will from Going Awesome Places. And if you love travel and you love going to awesome places, make sure you subscribe below for more. Well, Ireland doesn't need much introduction. It's a gorgeous country. Talk about sweeping landscapes, jagged rock, lush and flowing scenery. Um, these are all hallmarks of this gorgeous country. So with seven days to work with, we had to figure out what to see and what to do in Ireland. And for anyone that knows about trip planning, it's an exciting time, but also can be a big pain in the butt. So many decisions, and where do you even start? So the only thing I knew was that I didn't want to do Northern Ireland because I had done it before. But beyond that, anything was open. So in the end, what we decided on was basically, let's stick with Southern Ireland. But even then, boy, were we naive to think that we could do all of Southern Ireland even in seven days. So anyways, I'm back from Ireland, want to share with you everything that I learned and share those top 10 places that we really loved on this road trip. You definitely want to check it out and make sure you get to the end of the video because I reveal a super secret code for Galway Glamping. I kind of need to start here, right? I mean, Jeebus, it's freaking incredible. Yes, I'm a Star Wars fan, and yes, I totally brought a mini lightsaber, and yes, I totally dueled a kid while I was there, but it's so much more than that. You get on a boat in Port Mickey, and you're out in the middle of the ocean with these two giant islands that jut out of the water. The first one, aptly named Little Skellig, looks like white, and you think it's, it's really just a white island until you get up close, and then you see all the birds. Past that, you have Skellig Michael, which is the sanctuary ecosystem for so many unique species of birds, including the puffin. I almost forgot about the monastery when we got off the boat because of the tens of thousands of puffins that we saw. June is really the most perfect time to go because that's when they're all there and they just hatch their newborns. I mean, Skellig Michael was definitely one of our favorite experiences of the entire trip. The Rock of Cashel is one of Ireland's most unique and spectacular archaeological sites. It is legitimately a castle on a hill. <laughs> Sent over the castle on the hill. Found on a prominent green hill, banded with limestone outcrops, rising from a grassy plain and bristling with ancient fortifications, this was the traditional seat of the kings of Munster hundreds of years ago prior to the Norman invasion. This picturesque complex has a character of its own and is one of the most remarkable collections of medieval architecture to be found anywhere in Europe. Most of the structure is intact and what a sight it is to see. Ireland at its wildest can be found in this picturesque loop at the heart of County Kerry. This 179 kilometer circuit of this peninsula is perfect for driving with the road that winds past pristine beaches, medieval ruins, mountains, lakes, and views of island-dotted Atlantic. This is the same Ring of Kerry where you'll also get access to the Skellig Michael. This loop starts in Killarney and it's recommended that you drive counterclockwise because officially all big coach buses have to go this way. Now, while everyone warned us that these roads would be hard to drive, we actually didn't find it too bad, but that might have been because we had a wacky time schedule that you know, involved us starting late and ended late. Along the way, I highly recommend that you stop along the many towns, and I, I can say that you can easily do the loop in one day, but you'll have to be creative with your itinerary if you want to do Skellig Michael, because that often starts early in the morning and departs from Port McGee, which is about midway through the loop. Oh, also, don't miss Valencia Island, which has gorgeous views of the landscape and its towns. There's also Kerry Cliffs, which most guidebooks don't really talk about. It's kind of like a, a little brother to Cliffs of Moher, but I love it there because there are way less tourists there, and you get this wild collection of jagged rock and dramatic cliff drops from the several viewpoints that are available. To round things out, you have Moles Gap and Ladies' Room. How you do this drive is really up to you and depending on the time, stop where you please and continue onwards if you're short on time. Perhaps the biggest surprise of this trip for me was the entirety of the Dingle Peninsula. This may be a little less famous than its cousin, the Ring of Kerry, but it is equally, if not more charming and beautiful. It's a place where lands meet ocean, 
The sharp rocks jut out of the water, tiny settlements spread all over, and sandy coves appear once in a while. Here you'll also find an ancient landscape of ring forts, beehive huts, early Christian chapels, picturesque hamlets, and abandoned villages. The most memorable thing here is the drive around where things can get a bit hairier than the Ring of Kerry because you actually get really close to the edge and the roads narrow to one lane along Slayhead Drive. Don't miss the town of Dingle either because you'll find some amazing food here, fungi, the dolphin, and charming streets. We have a Killarney in Canada, but it surely isn't the same as the original Killarney National Park in Ireland. The natural beauty of Killarney is undeniable and spans a large area. During your visit here though, you'll most likely base yourself in the city of Killarney and from there you'll be able to enjoy the sights of Muckross House, Muckross Abbey, Ross Castle and Torque Waterfall. Killarney is perfectly situated to be either at the start or end of your drive through Ring of Care. A trip to Ireland wouldn't be complete without this behemoth site. It's hard to describe the staggering beauty of these vertical cliffs that fall into the ocean and the colors that shine through depending on the lighting conditions. Hues of amber, amethyst, rose pink, and deep garnet red. Now, as a super popular destination, it's going to get crowded here. Now, if you check out the blog, you'll see that I've dropped a ton of super secret tips about one, not paying for parking, and two, where the best spots are to hike to and take photos from. What I'll say is that the official Cliffs of Moher viewing points are okay, but if you leave the official boundary and head north, that's where you'll get that glorious view of the cliffs and can see the waves of Towering Walk weave in and out for miles. I think what really impressed me about Ireland is just how distinctly different each county is. Once you get to County Clare, not only do you have the Cliffs of Moher, but you also have this alien-like landscape in the Buren National Park. What's interesting about this park is that it's not run like your standard national park that you're used to with an official entrance. The visitor center is actually in a nearby town, and for the park, you kind of just take a small road through it. And if you know your hiking trail routes, you just park on the side and head out. Ooh, now this is my favorite city in Ireland. What I love about it is that it's comfortably small, to be easy to explore, full of energy from the locals, delicious food, it's approachable, it's fun, it's artsy, and it's bohemian. Don't miss the buskers, live music, boutique shops, cafes, and local restaurants along the long promenades of pedestrian streets. We had a lot of fun at Galway. I've stayed at prisons, converted into a hostel in Sweden. I've been to Alcatraz, but I have to say that this is the most fascinating prison I've been to. Steeped in a dark history, our guide walked us from wing to wing, recounting the story of the painful path to independence and the famous inmates that resided there. The most memorable part is the newest wing, actually, of the prison, which was a big change of philosophy to incarceration, which led to open spaces and a lot of natural lighting. My only regret was that I didn't know enough about Irish history to start to remember all the inmates that were named. Make sure you book your tickets online because they sell out and they have fixed times for their excellent, excellent tours. Oh, the famous Blarney Stone. I saved the best for last, of course. Now, everyone knows about the Blarney Stone and yes, we lined up for almost an hour. I'm proud to say that I am the recipient of eloquence or really leveling up my smooth talking. It's a tradition that goes back to Queen Elizabeth I, where there was a saying that was invented, quotations, to talk with Blarney. Uh, while it was certainly interesting to see this 15th century up close and personal as some random guy held me in place for me to make contact, my lips to the top of the battlements, it's honestly the rest of the grounds of this place that doesn't get enough credit. From the Fern Garden, 
toxic plants in a Harry Potter-like poison garden or landscape nooks and crannies of the rock close, these are the places that make this place worth spending time in. One of the biggest surprises of our own road trip through Ireland was our stay at Galway Glamping. Who knew you could find Mongolian yurts out here? I mean, it was truly unique with their mismatched furniture inside our yurt and colorful fabrics. Set in a historic estate, the grounds are absolutely beautiful and being a place of glamping, uh, there are also comforts that you'd need, uh, including individual showers, bathrooms, seconds away, a full kitchen, and a homey reading room complete with fireplace. Well, my friends at Galway Glamping have been kind enough to offer my subscribers 20% off their next stay with them. Just make sure you book directly with them and reference the code going awesome glamping. So there you have it, 10 amazing places in Ireland to add to your very own epic road trip around the country. Drop a subscribe down below before we head out and I hope you've enjoyed this top 10.